What's going on guys? Today we're going to be doing a different kind of video. We're going to be discussing Edison format rulings. Now, in general, I think older format rulings are just a lot worse than like modern day Yu-Gi-Oh card rulings. We have like modern problem solving card text now and everything is just a lot more centralized and consistent and organized than it used to be. In old formats, you've got all these weird nonsense rulings that just, you don't know where they came from. Some judge somewhere just decided and that was how it worked for like four years. And Edison is definitely no exception to that. There's a lot of random, bizarre, mind boggling rulings. And we're gonna be taking a look at some of the most personally annoying ones today. So starting with this one on the screen, um, this is probably the least objectionable one on the list. Uh, I, I ordered them from dumbest or from from least dumb to dumbest. So we're starting with the least dumb, which is uh, Rivalry and Gozen. Now Rivalry and Gozen are pretty much just garbage in Edison format, uh, and it's because of this ruling that was discovered where you can just tribute someone under them. Like hypothetically, let's say you control one monster and it's a treeborn frog. You can just tribute it and summon a Caius, uh, even if Rivalry or Gozen is on the field. Uh, so this pretty much just makes Rivalry and Gozen garbage um, because, you know, Caius is a pretty ubiquitous card that will just, like, outstuff and uh, get rid of it. Or Like, it's just so easy to play under it because of this uh, of this ruling. And obviously, Frogs is one of the big decks that you would want to side these cards for, and they're just not handicapped at all by Rivalry or Gozen now. Um so yeah i mean the reason this is least objectionable is because it makes ignorant floodgates just unplayably bad so i mean that's strictly a positive in terms of like the gameplay element of edison format but obviously we're used to rivalry and goes in just stopping that sort of thing also i believe you can't synchro summon under rivalry and goes in into something of a different type which is just super bizarre and inconsistent because it's like the same thing intuitively like why can't you synchro summon but you can tribute summon so this ruling is just really weird, but overall it's kind of probably a positive thing because it means no one sides Rivalry or Gozen because they just suck. So yeah. On to the next one. This is one I just learned about today, which is apparently trap monsters still take up a spell trap zone in Edison format, even when they're in the monster zone. There's just like one spell trap zone you can't use, which is super weird like i had no idea well how is it in two zones at one it doesn't make any sense and like it just makes a really bad deck even worse if you think about it because it's like these uriah decks that play tons of trap monsters they kind of need to have all their zones so it's like why is it like this i don't even i don't get how it was ever ruled this way but uh whatever just an interesting little fact sort of towards the bottom of the list because it's kind of like who really cares this doesn't affect that much so whatever but just an interesting one to note. And yeah. Uh, here's one that comes up pr relatively often. I'm not sure. Uh, I see it every now and then. It's like uh, chain blocking. So for those of you who play modern Yu-Gi-Oh, you probably know all about chain blocking. It's a way you can like order chain links. If you have two mandatory effects or two optional effects, you can order the chain link such that you can like dodge in a gate, right? But in Edison format, and in a lot of older formats, I think, the graveyard effect, if there is one, it just has to be first. It has to be chain link one. I don't know why. Like, there's not really a good reason for this. It's just the way that it is. So, like, the example on the screen is if you tribute someone a Caius using a Sangan or, like, a Goblin Zombie or a Dandelion or something, then it, your opponent has, like, a set Divine Wrath, let's say. Or, I, that's super weird, but let's just say they do, right? They can always just Divine Wrath your Kai's because you have to put Sangan or whatever Chain Link 1 and Kai's Chain Link 2 because that's just the way it's got to be. So there's no way to play around the gates, and it's just a weird ruling that, like, removes a point of, like, skill and interaction from the game. Now, it doesn't come up, like, super often because, as I mentioned, uh, no one really plays stuff like Divine... There's not a lot of monster negates out there that are just, like, negate monster effect, you know? There's no Strike. There's no, like, Appaloosa or whatever, so... I mean, I guess there's Lad, but no one really plays that. The, like, biggest of example of this would probably be, like, maybe something like Debris Zombies trying to chain block Black Rose Dragon with Beast of the Pharaoh or something like that. But you can't do it with Debris Dandy. So it doesn't come up super often. It's just, like, a weird and kind of silly way that the game used to work. So that's why it's a little bit lower on this list. But it's still kind of dumb. So 
Anyway, let me know what you think about chain blocking. Anyway, let's move on to the next card, which is My Body is a Shield. This card is stupid in multiple ways. All right. I, I've, I've noticed, I, I just learned yesterday about this, about this other part, right? Um, where My Body can negate not only spell trap cards, but spell trap effects, even though that's literally not what it says on the card. So it can negate like Blaze Accelerator or an already face up Royal Oppression, even though. There's absolutely no way you could get that from reading the card. Like, it's worded just the same as Solemn Judgment, Negate Spell Trap card, or Monster Effect. It's like, why can you do that? It's, it's not, it doesn't make any sense at all that it would work this way, yet it just randomly does. And then, furthermore, it also doesn't work in Damage Step, even though it should work in Damage Step, because it's worded exactly the same as, like, Stardust versus Raikou, where it's negating a Monster Effect that destroys a card on the field but it just doesn't for some reason so this card is like confusing and bizarre in multiple ways and i don't get it like i played against a guy the other day on the channel you probably saw um who just tried to use my body and damage step and just couldn't understand why he couldn't and um i mean yeah he he was wrong but he wasn't wrong to like wonder why you couldn't because you really should be able to so like no part of the way this thing is ruled makes any sense to me in edison format but whatever whatever on to the the egregious top three i think so the next one should be okay no wait there's four left there's four left my bad my bad this one's still pretty dumb though i mean very dumb so a lot of you probably know this one deck devastation virus treats monsters with indeterminate attack stats that are face down on the field or in the hand with like question mark attack stats as having zero attack. Now, this is not the way that monsters with indeterminate attack stats work. Like, Trigodia does not have zero attack in your hand. If Trigodia just had zero attack, you could, like, search it with Sangan or something stupid like that. I mean, there's no other, like, way that the game works. Like, the uh, monsters with indeterminate attack are always just, like, sort of unusable or unaffected by cards that specify attack stats. But for some reason, deck dev specifically just like doesn't care about this it just decides they're zero like how are you deciding they're zero they're not zero they're unspecified <laughs> oh my god it's just it's so dumb and i it deserves its placement higher up on this list because it hurts my boy my favorite card Trigodia. why how dare you rip Trigodia out of my hand you bastard anyway <laughs> anyway yeah really dumb ruling doesn't make any sense gonna be a common theme uh for these uh for these rulings as you can see on to the next one. Okay, we should be in the top three now, which means we should be on to Mind Crush. Now, the way Mind Crush works from, like, 2011 onward, at least 2011 onward. It might have even been earlier uh, in 2010. From then until now, the way Mind Crush works is you always can check hand if not every legal card is accounted... Not every legal copy of a card is accounted for. So, like, if your opponent discards one and uh, there's other legal copies missing, you can check their hand. If they discard two, and there's another legal copy missing, you can check their hand. If they discard zero, you can check their hand. The way in Edison it works is you can only check their hand if all legal copies aren't accounted for and they don't discard anything. So, like, you could just have three of a card in your hand and discard one of them, and that's just fine. You're just allowed to cheat. Like, that's basically what this ruling boils down to is cheating is allowed. You can, you can just cheat if you want. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. Like, the only way that you could really feasibly play the game, even with this ruling, is if you just called a judge every time Mind Crush was activated or something. It's so bad and so stupid that, like, actual Edison events that are run by uh, Keegan now just don't even use the, that ruling. They just use the modern ruling of Mind Crush because, like, how can you even run a tournament with the old ruling of mind crush it's so game breaking it's so so unbelievably stupid and poorly thought out so yeah definitely deserves uh its spot here towards the upper end of the list even that this ruling just kind of breaks the card like i i don't even know how to describe it like if you play with this ruling how can you ever just resolve mind crush you know i mean unless they discard zero or three I guess, but it's just, it's so bad. It's so, it's so wrong. It's so dumb. I've ran it enough. Let's move on to the next ruling on the list, which is Armory Arm. 
I put this above Mind Crush. Now, what is it about Armory Arm that bothers me? Uh, a lot of you guys know, probably, that there's like this Colossal Armory OTK thing. The reason this works is because Armory Arm has a really specific, bizarre ruling where it checks attack points on the field. Now, Armory Arm is the only card I can think of with an effect like th this that checks attack on the field. Every other card ever with like a Flame Wingman sort of effect checks attack in Graveyard. Like... I don't know. What's an example? Like, it's like Thought Ruler. It's like Reverse Flame Wing Man, I guess. But just every card with an effect like this checks attack in Graveyard. In fact, Army Arm itself doesn't activate until the monster's in the Graveyard, which begs the question, how is it even a checking the attack on the field if it doesn't activate until the monster's in the Graveyard? Does it, like, peer back in time or something? Like, it's not even consistent with its own card text. And it's just not how anything with this effect works. And... On top of the fact that the ruling is dumb and doesn't make sense, it's a ruling that just for no reason at all enables really stupid out-of-nowhere OTKs with Armory Arm Colossal, where it's just like, you might be in a fine position or a winning position, but if your opponent just draws the right combination of cards in some kind of synchro deck, you can just randomly lose the game to Armory Arm Colossal. It's like, this doesn't add anything to gameplay, it just detracts a lot. It's just a really stupid way to lose the duel, and... <laughs> It's a ruling that furthermore makes no sense, which is why it's so, so high on this list for me, because it's just really dumb and game-breaking in every way. So that is how I feel about the ruling for Armory Arm in Edison format. It's really trash and should not be the way it is. I mean, this ruling was explicitly changed pretty much for, like, gameplay quality reasons in 2011 because it was just, like, so stupid that Armory Colossal OTK was, like, a thing that was just in every extra deck because like well if i draw the right cards i might just win so you know uh that should tell you about like how how good uh this was for the game very very dumb very silly on to the next one the final the holy grail of bad edison format rulings we have quick draw synchron now if you don't play edison format you might not know but in edison format quick draw synchron starts a chain in your hand when you special summon it. Now, the reason this is number one is because pretty much every other ruling on here falls into the category of, like, this is an old ruling, or this is how it worked in Edison format, right? But Quick Draw Synchron has never worked like this. Like, what must have happened is some random judge at SJC Edison just made an incorrect call when they were, uh, like, called to resolve a dispute. And because of that, we are now just stuck playing this ruling for Quick Draw Synchron that has never existed. Quick Draw Synchron, from the time it was printed up until now, has always just been an inherent special summon that does not start a chain. Like, you just drop Quick Draw, and, like, you can't respond to the to it in hand, you know? It's just on the field. It's it's there. It's like Machina Fortress or Dark Greffer or Cyber Dragon or whatever. That's just how Quick Draw Synchron is. It's how it's always been. But... In this one specific instance in history, someone said that Quick Draw Synchron starts a chain. So for some reason, this is the ruling we play now. Like, this is not even historically accurate. If I was playing Quick Draw Synchron in a deck in April 2010, I would have played it without it starting a chain in the hand, because that's how it worked in that time period. But because of some, like, one stupid decision, this is just the way it works now. <laughs> like... I don't, I don't understand, like, how is that more historically accurate? It doesn't make any sense. Quick Draw just doesn't work, it just does not. Like, that's not what Quick Draw Synchron does. It, this one just irritates me to no end for, for this reason, because I just, I can't get over it. I can't get over why we choose to play with this ruling. It's like, it, it makes no sense. It's confusing to new players. It's confusing to old players. It should just be confusing to every player because this is not how Quick Draw Synchron works. It's just not. So, I mean, there's nothing else to really say about it besides this is, like, not an old ruling. This is just a wrong ruling. It's just wrong. Like, there's nothing else. There's no other way to describe it. It's just incorrect. It's the incorrect ruling, and we play with it. So that's why it's number one for me. That's why it will always be number one for me. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this little rant like slash discussion top 10 list but with only eight things i think uh if you want more videos like this uh be sure to let me know give the video a like subscribe to the channel do all of that stuff and i'll see you guys next time